Hey y'all, welcome back. If you remember on last week's episode, we had to wait for some parts for our KX250F build. Our kicker gear had a broken tooth. So we got a new one and we're going to continue to put this bottom end back together, get it back in the frame, get this thing started up, and we're going to do a couple other little odds and ends to bring this thing up to spec and then we'll take it for a ride. Stay tuned. Slowly tighten your clutch hub bolts in a cross or star pattern slowly and incrementally. If you're trying to put this on and the front of it doesn't want to go down, it's more than likely the water pump gear is getting caught on the crankshaft gear. If you can get a little screwdriver in there and turn it, otherwise you'll have to take the water pump cover off and turn the impeller. Again, just like anything else where you mesh it together, make sure your parts are still turning and not binding. Now that we got our engine built, get it back in the frame.
get some 93 non-ethanol in there. This one's getting a treat. Not too much in case it blows up right away. Yeah, I used this carburetor on the YZ project and it started right up, so it should be kind of in spec. I know it works, so let's see how this one goes. Well, this feels like a whole bunch of deja vu. This bike does not want to start. It tries to start a little bit more than a YZ did. And I don't feel that this is a carburetor issue because this is the carburetor that I put on the YZ and it started up one kick. So I'm going to have to get into a little bit of diagnostics with this. Um, obviously, I know I've got spark. I need to check, do a cylinder leak down test and make sure that my valves are sealed like they're supposed to be. And again, just double check everything from top to bottom. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Well, double checking everything, valve timing, stellar, valve shim adjustments, clearances, right on the money. This thing is drastically failing the cylinder leakage test. Uh, as you can see, I've got 80 PSI going in and only about 56 PSI. So that's quite a bit of leakage. I don't know how to do the math on it, but uh, it shouldn't be anywhere near that. We should be seeing something like 78 or 77. Uh, I did spray a little bit of oil down in the cylinder and retested it, and the numbers were much closer. And as that oil has been pushed out, it is now dropping, and it continues to drop. So that leads me to a couple of different things here. Um, obviously, it's brand new rings, and it only has one compression ring, which kind of sucks. Uh, they're not broken in, so he definitely could have some bypass on the cylinder and rings. Um, bad head gasket. It is a brand new head gasket, but that being bad would cause this issue as well. Also a crack in the head or the cylinder or the piston, um, unfortunately. We know the piston is not going to have a crack in it. The cylinder is in really great shape, so I may have to pull this back apart and replace the head gasket and then retest this. But it's going to be very difficult to start with this much bypass on the, the piston and the rings. Now keep in mind, I mentioned the things that I thought it was. Obviously, uh, a leakage like that could be other things, uh, including intake and exhaust valves not seating properly or leaking to the cooling system or something like that. The reason I didn't mention those is because doing the leak down test, I threw my earlobe up against the exhaust the intake and the cooling system and no air is coming out the only air that i hear coming out is out of the crankcase itself so that's a bypass of the cylinder head gasket or the rings piston something like that so unfortunately i'm gonna have to pull this top end back apart again just see if maybe i got a bad head gasket or look a little bit deeper at the head just to see if there's a crack in it or something like that so it is what it is well, as you can see, I tore the top end back apart again. Went over this thing with a fine tooth comb, inspected the head, inspected the cylinder, reinspected the rings, make sure everything was good, and I think I found my problem. Really stupid, stupid oversight on my part. So as you remember, we, I have a big bore kit in this thing, and I ended up purchasing a stock top end gasket kit. So basically, our head gasket is too small for the size of the cylinder and what's happening is the compression is leaking past the head gasket not really sure why i didn't 
think of this when I was putting this together, but hey, accidents happen. People make mistakes. But I'm going to go ahead and order the top end gasket kit for this thing for the big bore kit, which is the 80 millimeter kit. That should fix our problem and we should be good to go on this engine. All right, I got this engine back together. Let's give this another shot. Honestly, still feels like it's pretty low on compression. It's acting like and it's feeling like it's low on compression. It's trying to start, but not getting there. Let me get another cylinder leak down test with the new head gasket. See if that improved anything. Something is definitely still not right here. If you need to listen to sounds remotely, tough to get your ear in spots. Piece of hose does a pretty good job. Stick one side in your ear, and then as you go around, it's almost like a stethoscope. And you'll hear the little fine details that you may not be able to hear with your ear far enough away. It pinpoints it, if you will. I do hear very, very minute sound through the intake and through the exhaust, but the majority of it is coming around the ring. Zzz. And no bubbles in the coolant, so it's not leaking past the head gasket. I'm wondering if I got some sort of issue with this cylinder. Uh, it seemed to measure out fine. It's just not sealing with this ring, I don't believe. I think I'm going to pull this back apart again and see if I can see where it's leaking past. It's almost impossible to see here, but I'm going to show you a little trick on the bench, how we can see where things are leaking. Well, got it back apart again. Everything still looks good. So what I want to do is find out why this thing is bypassing and where it's bypassing. So... We're just going to go ahead and build this top end right here off of the bike. Now what we need to do is put something in here to keep this piston from flying out. Just got some plastic shims. Alright, couple quick words of warning here. Never put your face over the top of this thing because if these zip ties were to break, this piston is going to come out of here with a lot of force and definitely could get, you could get hurt. Also, there's no way we're going to be able to pressurize this thing to 90 PSI. I think we'll be lucky if we get to 10, but that should be enough to see where we're kind of leaking. About as far as I'm gonna go and you can hear this thing is just mad leaking I'm gonna give it a little shot of watery soap so what I'm seeing is this swirling action right here and these are the oil holes that allow oil into the oil control rings so this compression is leaking past the main compression ring and also leaking past the top oil control rail 
and that's kind of a bummer so I don't know why this is doing this but it's obviously not allowing us to build any pressure in the cylinder Looks like I do have a little bit of bubbles on one of the exhaust valves. So I'll have to try to address that. So I'm thinking at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and abandon this big bore cylinder and piston and all that stuff. I'm, I don't know why I'm having so many issues with it. It's kind of strange, but I'm just going to go back with uh, standard stuff and keep my fingers crossed. All right, so I got my new piston and cylinder installed and before I go any further on this thing I'm going to go ahead and do a leak down test to see if we fixed the problem or we still got other issues. Oh, already looking a thousand times better. eighty psi on the inlet eighty psi on the outlet it's as perfect as it gets this thing should have full compression I honestly didn't see anything wrong with that other cylinder but there's obviously something wrong with that other cylinder I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together well since the cylinder leakage test was a huge success and I went ahead and ran a compression check on it. I'm getting 75 PSI uh, after five kicks, which is definitely well within the range of where it should be, especially for brand new rings and cylinder. I haven't even broken in yet, so I'm pleased with that. Um, I think we got our problem fixed. So I put it semi together in case I have to pull it back apart and do any kind of carburetor work. But we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a few kicks and see if um, we're gonna continue building on it or if you guys are gonna find it in a dumpster somewhere. That's definitely a good sign and to be quite honest with you I was pretty much at my wit, wits end with this thing um, you know I think my first video on here was a 2009 KX 250 F and I had a ton of problems with that one too if I remember correctly something about this gear I mean because usually I have really good luck with the KX's um, they're pretty much bulletproof for the most part you know what I mean so I don't know if there's a kind of issue with these years or something, but not with the bikes, just with me being cursed. So I'm pleased it ran. I'm going to have to do a little bit of carburetor tuning, tweaking, and we'll get some new plastics on it and make this thing look like brand new again. I have a new rear tire and whatever other maintenance. Obviously, we're going to replace the grips and other stuff. Well, as it turns out, I had to completely rebuild the carburetor on this thing as well. This thing is a demon bike, but I finally got it done. Put a new rear tire, some grips, new plastics. Yet to wash it, but it's a runner. Now we have to check to see if the transmission actually shifts, which I'm very confident that that's going to be okay. So, um, yeah, I'm not fond of these KX250Fs. Um, but anyway, I'll start it up so you can listen to the music. And we're going to go get it cleaned up. And we're finally going to end this unbelievable saga.
Thank <laughs> you.